really lovely to be uh, to be back up in Hampstead. I'm not here to visit Keats House. I'm here to do another river walk. But whilst we're here, might as well take in the house of Keats. Today, we're going to walk along the course of the Tyburn, or the Tyborn, maybe, but the Tyburn River, which runs underground from just up here, actually. The source is just sort of the other side of Roslyn Hill, at Fitz John's Avenue, by the Shepherd's Well. And it makes a confluence of the Thames. Well, that's the, that's the debatable bit. So uh, I'm really looking forward to it. It's probably going to get dark at some point. It's, Two o'clock, I always leave things too late. But um, as long as we get to Green Park before they shut the gates, which I think will be about four o'clock, we'll be okay. And the Tyburn is it's one of London's lost rivers. And I'll be using the route as described mostly in Nicholas Barton's iconic book, The Lost Rivers of London, published in, I think, 1962, supplemented with other bits from... Uh, uh, an old book called Wonderful London, 1925. So similar sources to my walk along the Warbrook. Famous for its Bolsheviks and its heath. Hamster sits really high up on the oh. northern heights of London. So we've got their tree up. It's the 3rd of January today. We took our tree down earlier today. It's always a little bit of a sad moment, isn't it? I just want to cut up through Perrin's Court to uh, Fitzjohn's Avenue, which is where the source of the Tyburn is, because it's down here that uh, the, the great, iconic comedian Peter Cook lived down here somewhere. And he lived uh, next door to a brilliant character called Rainbow George. And I came to George's house and, and interviewed him here, up here somewhere. And he recorded hours and hours and hours of conversations with, with Peter Cook. And he's got all the cassettes in his flat. And I'll put a link to a, another interview I did with him. But I can't remember where it is. It's here somewhere. It's a great bit of old signage, isn't it? Leonard's Delicatessen. Hampstead 9932. So here we go. Fitz John's Avenue which is roughly where the Tyburn rises. This is where we have to do a kind of a little bit of uh, river hunting, a bit of detective work, a bit of topographical detective work, because I don't know the exact source. The exact source was the, the Shepherd's Well. And all I know is it, it, it rises in Fitzjohn's Avenue and it runs along Fitzjohn's Avenue, which is a street of really kind of big, grand houses, as you'll see. So we'll have to look for any sort of indicators of a river valley or stream. It feels like we're walking along a ridge, actually, here. The hill is really quite steep here, heading down as we are towards Regent's Park and Swiss Cottage. It's a great view there, looking west to the high ground on the far side. I suppose that's looking across towards the Brent Valley to the west of London. Well, there's a very clear clue there, Spring Walk, this little alleyway leading off Fitzjohn's Avenue. There's actually a few rivers and streams which rise in Hampstead, naturally, being as it is, on high ground, a watershed. The Tyburn is just one of the more uh, significant, obviously one of the, the most famous one being the Fleet, of course. Right, so we had Spring Path, and here we have Shepherd's Path. Of course, the spring where the uh, Tyburn rises is at the Shepherd's Well. So I guess it must be, is this would be the point around here somewhere, wouldn't it? So this is the meeting point between Spring Path and Shepherd's Path. And actually you can see, look, there's a little dip here in the path. So this could be the point of the spring, I wonder. Got a roast vegetable ciabatta from Gales up in Hampstead which I which I need to eat but I'll be back on the camera when we get near the Freud Museum 
And there's a statue of Sigmund Freud set here among the bushes, which I'm sure he would read deeply into the positioning of this sculpture. It's interesting that you had, you had Freud in Hampstead and you had Karl Marx in Hampstead as well. It's an area with a lot of resonances. Of course, not far away, you had the anti-psychiatrist R.D. Lang and he had his place here, near here, his sort of experimental place. And uh, Rainbow George, who I was mentioning earlier, George had dealings with R.D. Lang uh, in the 60s, 70s. George is a fascinating character. He also was mates with Lord Luke and he used to go gambling with him. His dad was a diamond cutter in Hatton Garden. It's amazing. It's such, such an extraordinary story. I've seen all these black cabs go past. It makes me realise that uh, Hampstead, I think, plays quite a big role in Will South's book, The Book of Dave, where it, I think it becomes the Isle of Ham in the future when London is flooded. And Hampstead, of course, being one of the high points, is one of the surviving bits of uh, dry land. There's a map in the Book of Dave that my old dear mate Nick Papadimitriou helped construct. It's quite a change when you hit Swiss Cottage, isn't it? Yeah. Although I'm almost certain that what you see over there is a relatively modern mock-up of what was the original Swiss Cottage, which is where the area takes its name from. It, there literally was a Swiss-style cottage here. That's what I've heard, anyway. So apparently, the Tyburn continues on down Avenue Road through Swiss Cottage, which should bring me to the edge of Regent's Park, where we might get a kind of a half glimpse of the actual river in a pipe, but even so. It's not so easy to imagine a river meandering its way through the fields in what is now a really built up part of London, you know, all the way down the course here. Actually, until we get to the very end, in Parliament Square kind of sits within the terrain of the river. But that's, in a way, that's one of the attractions of doing these river walks, is that actually all the river is really doing is guiding us and drawing our attention to certain aspects of the landscape. That's the way I feel about it anyway. Got some serious money along here, all these sort of gated off homes. This is really uh, Millionaire's Row, Oligarch's Alley. In Ben Aranovich's brilliant Rivers of London books, where each of the, uh, the London rivers has their own goddess. It's amazing, and there's actually an actual person. And he brings them to life. And Ty, Tyburn, Lady Ty, is this very kind of grand sort of social climber who is very connected with the, with the kind of like the great and the good, as opposed to Mama Thames, who's a bit more earthy and a bit more real. Lady Ty is kind of, you know, very kind of posh and grand. And you can see, can't you, this is where that comes from, I guess, this street. It's interesting that just to our left is Primrose Hill and that's an area which has picked up a bit of kind of esoteric relevance over the years and there's a burial mound on Primrose Hill, a barrow and people have gathered there at various points on the solstices. In that direction there you have Lord's Cricket Ground and Abbey Road Studios, very significant area. So here we have the entrance to Regent's Park. And apparently the, uh, the Tyburn is carried over the Regent's Canal in, in, a, in a pipe, which we've got to try and find. It should be near here somewhere. So that's the, the bridge there, which is the continuation of Avenue Road, which is where I would expect the, uh, the river to be running. And um, it's where I thought I'd find the pipe. Now, looking along the canal here, I can't see a pipe anywhere running over the canal and I don't want to get drawn too far off course. I guess I could go to the next bridge, couldn't I? Walking along the canal here reminds me to say a, a massive, massive thank you to David Johns at Cruising the Cut 
for the for the lovely sort of review and shout out it gave me on New Year's Day, and to welcome all the uh, all the new subscribers that have joined the channel. So welcome to the channel. I hope you uh, I hope you enjoy what you find here, and yeah, it's lovely to to have new people watching the videos. There'll be lots more kind of uh, river walks later in the year. I've got some really good ones planned actually. So there's no pipe running over the canal here and there wasn't for a way to the uh, to the east of the other bridge. It's gonna be one of those things I think I'll have to look up when I get home to see where I went wrong. I'll get up and cross over this bridge here and along the, uh, the western edge of Regent's Park. So I asked this gentleman who was walking his dog uh, along the towpath if he, if he knew of the point where the pipe crossed the canal. And he said, well, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't think, I'm not sure. And I said, oh, really, do you know the area? Well, he said, yes, I'm a, I'm a Westminster city councillor responsible for this area. And I thought, well, if anyone knows about a pipe over the canal, it'll be this chap. And we had a great conversation. And he told me bits and bobs of history about the area. The best story he told me was how the residents of the US ambassador, which at the moment is still uh, on, the, uh, on the western edge of Regent's Park. Very grand, amazing house. Uh, that was once the home of Cary Grant, and his wife was an American heiress, and she owed a large amount of money to the, um, to the US government in uh, tax, in back taxes, which she couldn't pay. And so she uh, gave them this house, this beautiful grand house on the edge of Regent's Park, uh, she gave them that in lieu of the taxes that she owed, and that became the residence of the uh, of the of the American ambassador to to Britain. Of course, the actual freehold on the land is owned by the Royal Parks, is owned by the royal family, and the lease is expiring. A bit like the U.S. Embassy down in Grosvenor Square. Hence, one of the reasons the Americans have moved their embassy to Battersea to Nine Elms. Actually, ironically, pretty much opposite confluence of the Tyburn and the Thames. God, Tyburn links the US ambassador's residence to the embassy and also to the new embassy. Hmm. So we're just going to cut across the western corner of Regent's Park, which apparently is where the, uh, is where the Tyburn flows. There's a boating lake down here, so perhaps the waters of the Tyburn fed that boating lake. could have potentially, I suppose, drawn from the Tyburn to feed the ornamental waters here in Regent's Park. I haven't actually read that that was done so, but it was done in other parks that were in the vicinity of the Tyburn, but I don't know if it was done here or not. So here we have Baker Street. Famous, do I need to even say the name? Sherlock Holmes. Well, we don't want Baker Street actually, we want Gloucester Place, which is this way. Fascinating old London street between Baker Street and Gloucester Place. I think it's called Glentworth Street. So here we have Gloucester Place. We want to see if there are any signs at all of the river in any form. I'm not enormously optimistic about that. One of London's main thoroughfares, Marylebone Road, one of the great arteries of the city. So the Tyburn bends its course towards Marylebone Lane, somewhere here. It goes across towards Baker Street and over to Marylebone Lane. I have no idea exactly where, we need to look for an indicator. This street here, Crawford Street, seems to kind of line up with Marylebone Road. If you're imagining a meandering river through the fields, that's what I've got going on in my mind anyway. And look what we have here, just off Crawford Street, Spring Mews. And look, and it drops down there to low ground, so that could be where the Tyburn runs through. Let's go for a little look. 
So you can imagine it running through that gated area there, crossing over Spring Mews here. And then there's another little kind of utility area there in the next building, which is often the case with buried rivers. We don't often tend to like to use those as areas to build on. I read somewhere that a muse is where they used to keep falcons, apparently. Uh, whether that's true or not, I'm not entirely sure. But you see a lot of muses around this area, between here and sort of going west to Kensington. A lot of these little muse areas. And you can see another little passageway there next to the Beehive pub, which leads down to a little muse type area. It's one of London's best little cinemas, the Everyman Cinema on Baker Street. So I'm going to cut across Baker Street, I'm not going to walk down Baker Street. I think the river meanders this way, possibly beneath these buildings here, to join up with Maribone Lane. Sherlock Muse. I'd say that was a, a recent naming, <laughs> wouldn't you? If we go down this little cobbled street here, leading off of Paddington Street, I wonder if we'll get a sense of the, uh, of the Tyburn crossing over on its way, meandering its way to Marylebone Lane, which is where we know it runs down Marylebone Lane, and you'll see very clearly the course of a river there. So if you see here on the phone, the blue dot being where I am, Blanford Street here lines up with Marylebone Lane, which is definitely the course of the Tyburn. So I think... It could be cutting across through here. And again, you've got a slight sense of uh, the shape of the land here, the curvature and the contours of the earth. It might not necessarily be due to the Tyburn though. But it's nice just to walk around these little lanes, isn't it? Sometimes the backs of buildings tell you more about a place than the front. The other side of these buildings are some sort of fancy restaurants, posh boutiques. So just here where it's shimmering, it looks like spilt coffee or spilt tea. And that looks like where the land starts to rise again up to the road. So perhaps, perhaps in Campbell Lairs, the Tyburn runs through here. On the other hand, it may not. The Christmas lights in Marylebone High Street are lovely, aren't they? I'm glad they're still up and shining bright. So I was walking down Marylebone late, late one evening, that I was, I thought this must be the course of a varied river. Such an anachronistic kind of shape. And of course it is, it follows the course of the Tyburn. I think the raised area here is obviously the banks here at the entrance of Marylebone Lane. But otherwise down there, it follows the course of the river. Magical, eh? These are the moments I love when you're topographical rambling, when the streets speak to you and tell you their secrets. Here Marylebone Lane was telling us that beneath it runs a river, the Tyburn. And like the Walbrook flowing through the city of London, there's something special about knowing that there's this river that flows right through some of the busiest parts of the city. Carrying on as it always has done. But just uh, through a pipe beneath the ground. At some point, I think further back near Regent's Park, the Tyburn became a, a sewer quite a long time ago. And that kind of dictates its course from here on in. Look at this little bit here. That might make you think that that's where the river runs off. Although the course as far as uh, St James's Park, Green Park, Buckingham Palace is fairly uncontested from that point on, you know, Barton even says that maybe the river doesn't really flow beyond that point. It just enters sort of a marshy tract of land and there are channels and gutters and sewers that run on. It's interesting here, where the Tyburn crosses Wigmore Street, there's a really obvious elevation here. There's a rising in the ground to the higher banks on the other side, on the eastern bank of the Tyburn. 
Barton says there's a little bit of a debate about where it crosses uh, Oxford Street. There is an antique store up here which claims to have it running through its basement, although that's more likely like a, a conduit that was fed off the Tyburn to, to feed water, you know, to supply water to perhaps to some farmland or to a house. Even so, it could be interesting to see it. It's right near Bond Street, so somewhere down here right ahead of me. So the Tyburn crosses Oxford Street somewhere near here, near Bond Street Station. So apparently this is the original HMV store, the very first one. Apparently now they're under threat of closing all across the country, which would be really sad. Got to have some Hari Rama in the video. <laughs> So our best guess for where the river continues across Oxford Street is down here, Davis Street. This is Grey's Antiques and hopefully if we go in here, they claim to have the waters of the Tyburn running through their basement. Be interested to see what we can see, wouldn't it? So this is the wrong branch of Grey's Antiques. It's an older building which is further down here, which has been returned to, uh, which has been returned to Westminster Council. So. But it's in line, it's in line with this building. This is the uh, corner of Davis Street and Brook Street. Brook Street obviously has a dead giveaway for you. I think it isn't it Brook Street where Jimi Hendrix lived and possibly where he died, right? I think anyway, I think there's a Jimi Hendrix museum down here now, I'm told. But you can actually you can see a kind of dip in the road in Brook Street, can't you? And here in Brook Street we have Claridge's, one of London's poshest hotels. We, we know where it runs a little bit further down, where it crosses Piccadilly. So you can imagine it crossing Brook Street here, actually. We are now obviously in Mayfair. London's Mayfair. And when you walk through Mayfair, you get a sense of the topography. You feel the peaks and mounds, the hills, the river valley. You sense the hill rising up here, halfway along Brook Street. And then just at the dip in the road, there's a little alleyway that leads on there. I'm going to cross over there now. Avery Row. And you can see that running downhill there. That's the kind of thing that could be kind of shaped by the course of an underground stream. Mayfair is great for its little alleyways and laneways anyway. Look at this. Lancashire Court. Again, you can sense the contours of the land here. You're going uphill to higher ground. This walk is taking a lot longer than I anticipated, so I had to stop for coffee and a sandwich. It's about half past five and started at two o'clock. This little alleyway here, Broadbent Street. This is the nearest thing I can get to following the course of the river. I might be able to pick it up further down actually. So I've come out of the back of the Gargossian Gallery and look, you can really clearly see it's running downhill to lower ground there. I would say the river's got to be running down through there. I love moments like this. So all the notes I've got on the course of the river are further down in Mayfair, down towards Curzon Street, Half Moon Street, that way, Bruton Place, Grosvenor Square, Lansdowne Row. That's all slight, there's a couple of streets over. So I'm having to try and work it out. Look, this is Grosvenor Hill. So I think it's down here. Look, I think it's at the bottom of this street here. You can see where it goes down. I think it goes through that building there. Obviously I can't walk through that building. 
This is Bourbon Place, and again, look, I think that's the course of the river there, just near that um, car, past the second statue. How quiet the streets are. And so I think here is where the river runs through, just past this white building. I think this is that's the lower point here. And obviously I'm going to have to go around the buildings to follow on the course of the river. But I'm pretty sure this is it. Let's go down and have a closer look. The way this street meanders around that curve could be the course of a buried river. I had to put my money on the course of the river between uh, Davis Street and uh, further down here, Bruton Street. Grosvenor Square, I would put it as going through here. This is a Bruton place, and again, look, you can see the, the low lying section of the land there where the Tyburn flows through. We know it crosses Bruton Street, which is here, and look, we have a little meandering lane down there, again, very reminiscent of Marylebone Lane, pub on the corner. I think, I think I'm going to go down that way. So Bruton Lane here lines up perfectly with Lansdowne Row on the other side there where we know the river runs beneath the ground. Yes, this definitely has a riverine vibe to it, a meandering riverine vibe. I've just been told that there you go, there's a plaque there in this lane that indicates that this is the course of the River Walbrook. Behind that scaffolding there's another one lower down on the wall. Isn't that fantastic? My guess is that it would have carried on behind these locked gates here. But we can pick it up on the, uh, on the other side where it comes out just to the south of uh, Barclay Square. On the far side there, next to Starbucks, I believe that is where the uh, the river runs beneath the paving slabs. This is a fairly lively little passage. Lands down row, rows and rows of people smoking their hooker pipes. And here, I think that the Tyburn flows roughly along the course of Curzon Street for a bit and then it apparently crosses uh, Half Moon Street and then we end up on Piccadilly near Green Park. This is uh, Half Moon Street and I've read either in Barton or in Wonderful London it passes across Half Moon Street, possibly passes down Half Moon Street because it goes into uh, Green Park Is um, hoping to pass is the uh, is the, the plaque on the wall which marks the site of the May Fair that gives May Fair its name. There was actually a May Fair that was held in the fields here, and that's where May Fair gets its name from. And what I thought was interesting is that place where the where that plaque is is near a slightly kind of seedy part of May Fair, um, which it does have a kind of uh, slight heritage of. I don't know quite, but they're sort of. Uh, nocturnal activity shall we say and that is near the site of the May Fair Piccadilly there's a fairly pronounced dip in the road there here on Piccadilly that must be where it enters Green Park so here we go this here was the site of the May Fair on Shepherd Street, a little bit further to the north of where I'm stood here, but here's a nice map. It's a shame it doesn't actually show the course of the Tyburn, which would have been nice, wouldn't it? Just behind me here is the point where Piccadilly meets Hyde Park. And you may have been thinking before, you associate the name Tyburn for the famous place of execution. Tyburn was the place where public executions were held for many, many, many centuries in London. They sort of grisly spectacles, and that used to happen just down the road from behind me here. Not actually on the banks of the river, but not far away. So astonishingly, Green Park is open, although it is completely pitch, pitch black. But there is a very obvious dip in the park, which is apparently the course of the Tyburn as it flows towards Buckingham Palace. Anyway, it's a bit of a shame that I am walking across 
green park in the dark, in the pitch black. Because it is a really lovely park, Green Park. One of my favourite sort of London parks. I mean, I love them all, to be honest with you. But... So here we have Buckingham Palace. And apparently one branch of the Tyburn runs beneath Buckingham Palace and works its way down to the Thames near Vauxhall Bridge. It's around here that the Tyburn said to split into three branches. One that goes under Buckingham Palace, sort of goes through Victoria and, and joins with what was known as the Tatch Brook, which I think again became like a, a sewer. And that runs down to near Vauxhall Bridge. And then another branch goes down towards the Houses of Parliament near uh, Westminster Abbey as well. And there's drawings of Westminster Abbey um, sat on the banks of a stream. And then there's a third branch which goes on the other side of uh, Westminster and creates what was known as Thorny Island because, of course, sort of Parliament Square and the Houses of Parliament, that sat on, on an island. There are a few of them still in the Thames. Anything that ends in either EA or EY is... Uh, Apparently that means like an islet or an island, like Bermondsey, Chelsea, etc. Nicholas Barton, though, in the, Ro in the Lost Rivers of London, which is the definitive source, and as a few of you are definitely going to mention Tom Bolton's book, Walking uh, London's Lost Rivers, and I'm sure that's a very fine book. I know Tom, and he's a very diligent researcher, and that'll be a, a great book, but um, I prefer to go back to what I consider the source, anyway, for me, Barton and the wonderful London from the 1920s, and Barton really says that, the, that to all intents and purposes that the Tyburn really ceases to exist around this point here between Green Park and St James's Park that basically here it peters out into a kind of swampy marshland. So you could in some way say this really is the end of the flowing waters of the Tyburn here at Buckingham Palace. What I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to follow the course of the Tatch Brook, which is one of the, the tributaries, or one of the branches of the, uh, of the Tyburn follows the course of the Tatch Brook. And I think that's the route I'm going to take down to Vauxhall. In the absence of any solid route, I'm going to follow the shape of the land again, which seems to be leading me down Buckingham Gate. And I've noticed that it will align with, uh, with the course of the Tatch Brook. I'm going to head down castle place. It's got a kind of the look of a river street, hasn't it? This is Vauxhall Bridge Road, not far away from Victoria Station. And branching off, just the other side here, we have Tatchbrook, which is another of London's Lost Rivers, where its waters were merged with the Tyburn. And I'm going to cross this road now. Another case of the of the streets speaking to us. Tatch Brook, recorded in the name. The streets are so quiet, aren't they? It's about half past seven on a Thursday evening, 3rd of January. I think London still hasn't woken up in the new year. Pimlico Tube Station, which always makes me think of the classic uh, Ealing comedy Passport to Pimlico. We're not far from the Thames here. You can feel we're moving towards the end of the walk. It's been a lot longer than I expected it to be. I honestly thought I might be able to get the sun in about two to three hours. We're now looking at more like five hours. It's been amazing, hasn't it? But we're not there yet anyway. So I think we're going to go down uh, Vauxhall Bridge Road to the Thames and that'll be the end. So somewhere down there, the Tatch Brook conjoined with the Tyburn makes its confluence with the sacred river Thames and the conclusion of our walk today. Another of the branches which uh, forms the western edge of Thorny Island is said to make its confluence with the Thames near that big tower block there, Millbank Tower. And I believe the, uh, the eastern edge of Thorny Island emerges in the Thames beneath the House of Commons. Wow, what a great walk, what a great start to 2019. Thank you so much for coming on this uh, River Rhine Odyssey with me today along the course of the River Tyburn. Look forward to seeing you on the next walk.